Racing in Queensland has had a stellar year, going from strength to strength. Boasting more than 40,000 participants, the industry contributes more than $1.2 billion in economic contribution to the state's economy each year, with over 40% directly benefiting regional economies. 4,570 thoroughbred races were conducted throughout the state and were hosted by 111 clubs. Prize money was lifted by 15.8 million to 118.7 million. With 10 extra tab meetings added to the racing calendar across the state, unlocking commercial outcomes for the industry and providing an additional $222,000 in prize money to participants. The jewel in the racing crown is the Winter Carnival. This year's carnival was no exception, providing many highlights and memories on the track. Both punter and participant had long waited for the return of racing to Eagle Farm. The new track is proving to be a spectacular success. With the growth and continued success of carnivals and race series such as the Magic Millions, the Northern Crowns and the Battle of the Bush, racing in Queensland will continue to grow and capture the public's imagination. Good evening everyone. Welcome to the uh, TAB 2019 Queensland Thoroughbred Awards. We are ready to go. Uh-huh. Cleared. Great to see you, Bernie. Great to be here. Great to be here. Very intimate Brisbane, isn't it? It is, and this is a beautiful room. The last time we were in this room, the last time I was in this room, was for the, uh, the Hall of Fame Awards mm -hmm. about four or five years ago when Glenn Boss and Robert Thompson were inducted and, uh, and George Moore became a legend. And it was, uh, it was a wonderful evening, and that's what Queensland do. They put on great awards, like they did with the last Hall of Fame, which we had at the most recent awards just down by the river. Absolutely, and they work hard all year, and they should be allowed to let their hair down here tonight. So no cameras after 10 o'clock, thank you. No. Yeah. I'm just glad I didn't cut my legs shaving as you cut your lip, Greg. I did, I did. Mm. I was a bit late getting here because I went over to Kelly Sweeter's place, and uh, he made me watch all his Group 1 wins. It took five minutes. No, 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 no. What? No, no, he's only won two, but we had to watch each one 50 times. Oh, of course. So it was a long, long afternoon. Long after he's down there, he's wearing a pink shirt with a pink tie. Of course he is. Um, Bernie, the, the, the format tonight, we've got a lot of awards to get through. There are Breeders' Awards. We have um, Premiership Awards, which we know the results of. Uh, we have five inductees into the Hall of Fame this year, which is wonderful. And we'll explain those uh, a little bit later. And of course, the, the big award for later in the night is the Queensland Horse of the Year. That's right, hotly contested. Yes. I'm sure everyone's got an opinion, right? Yep, and we'll be, show, we'll be showing you the finalists on the screen right throughout the night. There'll be, uh, there'll be four finalists that we'll show you, and by the time we get to the end of the night, the very last award this evening will be the, the Horse of the Year. So we've got plenty ahead of us. Um, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, um, we are going to introduce a few special guests. And would you please welcome to the stage, first of all, the Minister for Racing, the, uh, the Honourable Sterling Hinchliffe, to uh, welcome you all here tonight. Thank you very much, Greg, and thank you, Bernadette. Uh, can I commence by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which this event is taking place? Can I welcome you all to uh, the Thoroughbred Racing Awards? Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to celebrate everything about the thoroughbred industry and thoroughbred uh, sport uh, during this past year. Uh, can I acknowledge uh, Steve Wilson as the chair of uh, Racing Queensland, all of his board, uh, the uh, CEO, Brennan Parnell, and all of his team that are here with us tonight, uh, all of the luminaries, and they're all here, of Thoroughbred Racing in Queensland, thank you for uh, joining with this opportunity to celebrate your successes in your industry uh, during this past year. Uh, can I also acknowledge uh, uh, Sean and his team from TAB and all of the sponsors uh, for the awards tonight. Thank you for your support. But can I thank each and every one of the, the participants uh, in uh, this sport for joining us tonight and being part of this great opportunity to celebrate. I think um, those of us who, who read uh, Nathan Exelby's spread uh, yesterday in the Courier Mail would reflect upon how, how we have so many different things to celebrate, but 
it's also one of the things I think we should particularly celebrate and understand about what a wonderful uh, journey we've had of of expanding and making sure the sport is more representative of the whole of the community and, and the great emergence of so many more uh, females in the sport, so many more women in the sport is a great example of that. And I want to thank Nathan for highlighting uh, my friend Pam O'Neill uh, in his pieces in the, uh, in the career yesterday and it's wonderful to have Pam with us here tonight as well. Uh, we'll also see others added to the Hall of Fame tonight and I think that's a wonderful way in which this industry and this uh, community recognises its own. So thank you for allowing me to join you here tonight and uh, as I was asked to do, I say welcome and let's have a great night. Thank you, Minister. Would you please welcome to the stage now the uh, CEO of Raising Queensland, Mr Brendan Parnell. Thank you, Greg. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends all, uh, it's a great pleasure to be up here welcoming you along to the TAB the Queensland Thoroughbred Awards. We celebrate one of the industry's great nights. What a great roll-up. It's absolutely fantastic to see uh, people from far and wide come to Brisbane uh, to celebrate our great industry. To our minister and your government, uh, fantastic to have your support and work with you over the past 12 months. Um, so it's great to have you here, fresh from Surat, the first racing minister to go to Surat Cup. Well done. Um, to the member for Kapalabar, Don Brown, who's really helped um, this year on, on putting Kapalabar on the map as well as racing more broadly. Uh, and to many other distinguished guests, I'd like to acknowledge our chairman, Steve Wilson, and a great team of our board who are, are here tonight, many of our directors, uh, to the Commissioner Ross Barnett and, and your team as well. Our corporate partners are important uh, to help the racing industry succeed in Queensland. So to Sean, uh, from your behalf, and Darren as well with Sky, it's really important that we have great corporate partners supporting us and to make the night a big night. Well, it's been a big 12 months. There's been a lot happening in the last 12 months in racing. Uh, we can dwell on a few of the highlights, but I'll speed over a few of those. But we've endeavoured to make it a better racing industry for each of you uh, over the past 12 months. It's been a pleasure to share that ride. Uh, with many of you. At, at times we've had a little bit of turbulence along the way. Many congratulations will be handed out tonight. So many great stories in the past 12 months. To the Kruger family, last year we were toasting the McAlpines. To the Krugers with Better Than Ready, wow, what a great new young stallion we've got. To the Brisbane Racing Club, it's great to have you here tonight uh, and the Gold Coast Turf up around the new Tap Queensland Summer Carnival. We've got the new Gateway, we've got the new Wave, and new to summer we've got the Grand Prix. It's really exciting and enhancements coming for winter very, very soon. We stood up here last year and Eagle Farm wasn't racing. It had been a number of years out of play and it's an absolute um, delight to be up here saying the spiritual home or the grand old dame is back and I think we've all really enjoyed having Eagle Farm back racing. We've waved goodbye to a number of participants over the past 12 months. Jeff Lloyd, what an amazing career, uh, a phenomenal riding career and it's uh, something that will be acknowledged tonight. Sadly, we've lost some people who have been great servants to the industry, some far too young, and some as recent as Jeff Lane this week and last year on Melbourne Cup week, Basil Nolan Jr. So it's been a, a terribly sad period. Tonight is a celebration though, and tonight is the night we'll put the spotlight on a number of amazing achievements. Uh, I'd also like to highlight the role that the media plays um, in our racing industry. For me, it's an honour to be here some 30 years after I commenced in that uh, capacity in the media and we welcome uh, a great uh, from the Darling Downs into the Hall of Fame tonight, a great broadcaster and an early mentor of mine. To our race callers who uh, put the voice on our call, um, David's not here tonight, Josh is, um, the work that you do, the Sky teams, Bernie who's the face of Queensland Racing, Greg, great to have you up here as a part Queenslander, he did part of his time up here at Radio Tab many years ago leading to drink Bundy. Um, if I can, the Minister's highlighted Nathan Exelby and that amazing coverage that Nathan continues to give racing. Nathan, I don't know where we'd be without you, and um, it's you and your peers at News. That coverage on the weekend highlighted just the role of the media plays in celebrating our great sport, because without that, we wouldn't be on the, the newspapers and the news editions, uh, as Channel 7 was with Free to Air tonight in the Spring Racing Carnival. So the media who are here, uh, your efforts are very much acknowledged and I'm obviously a great advocate but it's just important we continue to tell the story because we've got so many great stories. That's enough from me. Have a great night and enjoy the celebrations. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, 
let's uh, launch into our awards tonight. And our first uh, lot of awards is for the, uh, the breeding industry. The breeding awards, the first of them is the Queensland Broodmare of the Year, sponsored by Thoroughbred Breeders Queensland Association. Basil Nolan, president of the Thoroughbred Breeders Association, is going to come up and uh, present and announce the award of this year's Broodmare of the Year. Come on up, Basil. The winner of the Queensland Broodmare of the Year, sponsored by TBA uh, Thoroughbred Breeders Queensland, is the Glen Logan owned She's Mina. The award tonight will be accepted by John Haslap, Broodmare of the Year, uh, She's Mina, the sire of uh, the uh, Dem, I'm sorry, of Lean Mean Machine, who sired by Zoostar. Uh, she's Mina, a smart race mare, starting 13 times for three wins and uh, one second, just under half a million dollars in prize money. Her best performances were in the listed BDC Tommy Smith slipper and running second in the Magic Minions two-year-old classic. She's by Glen Logan Park's Group 1 winning Stall Stallion Falvalon from the Group 1 winning New Zealand bred mare, She's a Mini. And she's the dem of three named foals to race. Uh, both winners, one being the dual Group 2 winner, Lean Mean Machine. Congratulations, Broodmare of the Year, She's Mina. Basil, stay with us. There's another envelope coming your way for the second award tonight, which is the Queensland Stallion of the Year, sponsored by Thoroughbred Breeders Queensland Association. And uh, Basil is about to announce the Queensland Stallion of the Year. The winner of the Queensland, the winner of the Queensland Stallion of the Year, sponsored by Thoroughbred Breeders Queensland, is none other than Spirit of Boom. Accepting the award tonight will be, of course, Scott McAlpine, Spirit of Boom, no stranger to the highest of accolades. This champion racehorse moved to the breeding barn to not only be crowned Queensland's champion first season stallion and champion of two-year-old stallion, uh, but also last season was Australia's champion first season sire by winners. And now with only two crops of racing age, Spirit of Boom has added another trophy to the medal piece by claiming Queensland's 2019 Stallion of the Year. 129 runners, 62 winners, five stakes winners banking, uh, just under $6 million in prize money. Outback Barbie, Champagne Boom and of course Boom Sarah who added the Magic Millions three-year-old guineas to the CV. Congratulations to Spirit of Boom. Well done, Scott. And thank you to Basil. Our third award tonight is the Champion First Season Stallion, sponsored by Thoroughbred Breeders Queensland. Stan Johnson, Vice President of the Breeders Association, is going to come forward and reveal who is this year's Champion First Season Sire. The champion first season tire is better than ready. Accepting the award, Jeff Kruger and Richard Foster, the principal and major shareholder from Yarramalong Park Stud. Congratulations to Better Than Ready off the back of a stellar 2018 season for Queensland's uh, spirit of boom. Unbelievably, along comes Lindhurst Studs, Better Than Ready, who eclipses the deeds of last season's champ. Uh, when the history of Queensland racing is researched, there's no doubting the integral role which Lindhurst has played for well over 100 years and will continue to play for many years to come. 
Our last season's champion, first season sire, Better Than Ready, has joined what is a plethora of Lynnhurst stallions that have achieved this before him. Names like Bull of Famous, Smoky Eyes, Hail to Success, Grand Shorty Air, Head Over Heel, Celestial Denser, Canadian Silver, Hidden Dragon and Sequalo, all past winners of this category. Congratulations to Better Than Ready. And once again, Stan, I'll get you to announce the champion two-year-old stallion sponsored by the TBQA. And uh, Stan, if you'd announce that award next. Champion two-year-old, of course, is better than ready. So, again. so not only is he Queensland's uh, champion first season sire, but better than ready has taken the title of champion two-year-old stallion after recording 23 individual winners from just 43 starters, 12 place getters, including three stakes winners for over $2 million in prize money. Better Than Ready is now the second highest sire of winners to runners in Australian racing history, just falling short of the mighty without fear. That is an incredible performance. Congratulations. Congratulations. And of course, his top performer was the Odyssey, who banked over half a million dollars. Congratulations once again. All right, we're going to go to our uh, first break. We've got a lot more awards to come, but I'd like you to take a look at the first of our finalists for Queensland Horse of the Year, Ty Zone. Stone, and here's Tie Zone down the outside. I'm a ripper, passage of time. Latest Tie Zone on the outside. He's finishing brilliantly. Tie Zone, Chapman versus the inside, but Tie Zone dashed up, grabbed the lead, and Tie Zone's won. Photos all round the miners. Violate, I'm a ripper. Off the leader on the outside is Winning Ways. Winning Ways has hit the lead. Welsh Legend trying to go with Winning Ways. Latest Dawson Diva down the outside. And also Lady Cavey. Winning Ways, Dawson Diva, Lady Cavey. Winning Ways in front. So there is the second of our finalists for Queensland Horse of the Year. Winning Ways winning the Group 1 Queensland Oaks. Let's move on to now to our next awards. And of course these are the Premiership Awards. Starting with the Country Premiership Jockey. Sponsored by Months Racing, so Corey Months will come up to present uh, this award. And obviously he's too I see to his dad, however he can fly a plane. So, Corey, welcome. <laughs> the winner of the Country Premiership Jockey, sponsored by Months Racing, is... Danny Ballard. Unfortunately, Danny can't be with us tonight, but I'd just like everybody to acknowledge that he rode 56 winners uh, for last season with a strike rate of 39.2%. So rounding that up to 40, it is absolutely unheard of. So congratulations, Dan Ballard. The next uh, award will be the Country Premiership Trainer, sponsored by Ladies in Racing magazine. So the Queen of the Turf, Pam O'Neill, welcome to present this award. Trainers sponsored by Ladies in Racing magazine is Bevan Johnson. <laughs> Paul Curran will accept this award on Billy Bevan Johnson's behalf. And Bevan Johnson trained 59 and a half country winners last season with a strike rate of 16 and a half percent and a total of 61 and a half winners across Queensland in the last season. So well done, Bevan Johnson. The next award is the Country Horse of the Year, and this is sponsored by Race Q. Jane Seawright from Racing Queensland, one of our very special uh, board members, female I might add, with a name like Jane, will present this award.
And the winner of the Country Premiership Country Horse of the Year, sponsored by Race Q, is Fab's Cowboy. What a marvel he was. He won 10 out of 21 last season. He ran second in Queensland Country Cup Challenge Final. And of course, he was a Battle of the Bush finalist. So congratulations to all the connections with Fab's Cowboy. next award is the Provincial Jockey of the Year, sponsored by Ipswich Turf Club. So please welcome Wayne Patch from the Ipswich, who is the Ipswich Chairman, uh, Ipswich Turf Club Chairman, rather. The uh, winner of the Provincial Premiership Jockey, uh, sponsored by the Ipswich Turf Club, is Justin Stanley. Well done, Justin. <laughs> Justin rode 117 and a half winners for last season. 109 and a half provincial winners with a strike rate of over 19.8%. He is a marvel. Well done, Justin. Our next award is Provincial Premiership Trainer, sponsored by Ardex Essentials. So please welcome Trish Fink, General Manager. of the Provincial Premiership Trainer, sponsored by Artex Technology and Artex Essentials, is Stuart Kendrick. With 53 provincial winners and a strike rate of 16.5% for last season, he had a total of 76 winners across Queensland also. Well done, Stuart. Uh, the next award is the Provincial Horse of the Year, sponsored by KBL Thoroughbreds. So we'll welcome Brad and Candace from KBL Thoroughbreds to present this award. A winner of the Provincial Horse of the Year, sponsored by KBL Thoroughbreds, is Mr Attitude. Mr Attitude won 9 of 17 last season, including the Mackay Newmarket and, of course, the hottest race in North Queensland, uh, the Cleveland Bay. Ricky Vale, not only is he good at training the horse, I'm told he's got the best guns in the room. <laughs> well done, Ricky. And all the connections of Miss Attitude. Right, the next one is the Metropolitan Premiership Train, sponsored by HQ Insurance. So please welcome Stuart Dowdy, Business Development Manager. Uh, the Metropolitan Premiership Jockey, sponsored by Magic Millions Insurance Brokers. And the winner is Mr. Jeffrey Lloyd. Well done, Jeff. 
Queensland Metropolitan Premiership winner with 78 winners, leading Queensland Metropolitan Jockey for the fourth season in a row. <laughs> He's just too good, isn't he? All right, let's move on to the next award. This is the Metropolitan Premiership Trainer, sponsored by HQ Insurance and uh, Stuart Dowdy, business manager. Did I say that one before? We go again. Come again. Uh, and um, yeah, announce the winner. Would be great. <laughs> uh, this year, the Metropolitan Trainers Premiership, um, proudly sponsored by HQ, is won by Mr. Tony Gollan. Tony Gollan, Queensland Premiership winner with 136 winners, a strike rate of 16.10%. Um, Queensland Metropolitan Premiership winner with 84 winners and a strike rate of 13.6% in the Metro. Uh, nine black type winners, including eight listed wins, including gold edition plate with a stable star, Zustar, and group one and one group three, sorry, with the George Moore with the Iron Ripper. What a, what a horse Iron Ripper's been for him. All right, our next award we'll move on to is the Stewards Award. Not the teacher's pet, it's just the Stewards Award. Sponsored by Racing Queensland Integrity Commission. <laughs> Let's welcome Peter Chadwick. <laughs> the winner of the Stewards Award sponsored by the Queensland Racing Integrity Commission is Michael Carl. Michael Carl rode two Group 1 winners on the Bostonian, of course, the 10,000 and the Kingsford Smith Cup. Two Group 3 winners on the Candyman and Fun Fact in the Premiers and the Grand Prix. Two listed winners on Balboa, Balboa, Balboa Rocks and the Sunshine Coast Cup uh, with Ready for Profit in the Gay Waterhouse as well. Finished fifth in the Metropolitan Premiership with 40 wins, so congratulations, Michael Carl. All right, we're going to take a break now while well, the mains will be soaked, so drink up and enjoy the night. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll move on with our awards now. And we get to the categories of Horse of the Year. Of course, the actual Queensland Horse of the Year will come at the end of the night. The first of the Horse of the Year awards in this category, in this segment, is the cutest horse of the year and it's sponsored by the stallion spirit of Boone. So I'd like to invite uh, Scott McAlpine, the stud major who stands uh, spirit of Boone at Eureka to come up and uh, announce who is the cutest horse of the year. Thank you. Thank you. Winner of the cutest horse of the year sponsored by spirit of Boone, thank goodness. Hold the line. The cutest horse of the year will be accepted by trainer David Van Dyke. Go on the run. Well done, Dave. Going fast. These horses. It's time now for the Queensland two-year-old horse of the year, sponsored by 07. Brendan O'Keefe, Senior Project Coordinator, is going to come on stage and announce the winner of the Queensland two-year-old of the year. We have four finalists. And those finalists are Garibaldi, Gem of Scotland, 
The Odyssey and Vinci Valare. Not here? Okay. The envelope, please. The winner is The Odyssey. Front here as well, prepared from the outside. The Odyssey, Sun City looking for the way, clear step on the outside and further out to Cromeric. But the Odyssey's in front here, Sun City coming through. But the Odyssey's in front from Sun City. The Odyssey's kicking well, Sun City tries late as Cromeric, but the Odyssey, the Odyssey's won by a half length on the line. The Odyssey led a half length theatre, ready to roam Niggle Dam. A length and a half to Xanthus, Magic, Baines and Picton's over on the inside, but the Odyssey had a real good kick. He's two and a half in front now from ready to roam. Xanthus on the outside, but it's all the Odyssey. Control the tempo in front. Wonderful ride, Jimmy Orman. And the Odyssey burst clear, one at four lengths. The Odyssey, the leader at wide, Peruto runs to second, Sugarburn losing touch. Ready to roam has gone past it, very wide and fast as Royal G. Finally, Ballon comes to the corner, Mr. Cavallo is the next one. The Odyssey is about three lengths in front from Peruto. Ready to roam, and here's class of Royalty down the outside. Mr. Cavallo buckets of pride, but still the Odyssey clear. About three lengths in front from Peruto. Lane is ready to roam, Mr. Cavallo down the outside from class of Royalty. But the Odyssey is in front, and the Odyssey, the Odyssey is going to win the duel. So we go from the two-year-old and we move on to the three-year-old of the year, sponsored by the Queensland Racehorse Owners Association. Uh, Vince Panisi is here, the president of the QROA. If you'd like to come forward, Vince, and announce the award. First of all, the finalists for three-year-old of the year this year are Baccarat Baby, Boom Sara, Winning Ways, and Zoo Style. What a year for the three-year-olds. Queensland three-year-old horse of the year, sponsored by QROA, winning ways. Golden Lily under pressure, then winning ways to Verne. Consular behind them looking for the way through. Winning ways, going after Champagne Garden. Consular in the middle, 150 metres out. The three across the track. Winning ways and Consular flat to the boards. Winning ways in front, forging clear now. Winning ways coming away. At the 350, word for word, the leader from Winning Ways on the outside, Baccarat Baby, and Atana's making ground back nearer the inside. Baccarat Baby, word for word, and Winning Ways on the outside. Winning Ways out wide. Winning Ways the leader now from word for word. Winning Ways in front from word for word, and Winning Ways. 300 metres left to run, remarkable sum with a kick. Sabarnabas beat him, then fighting Tio. Winning Ways trying to launch down the outside and deconstructed running on in high opinion. Just behind them with something to offer. Winning Ways with 100 metres to go, reached a clear lead. But Gilray goes for home. High opinions after it. Winning Ways in front. High opinion diving. Winning Ways and high opinion in a photo. Congratulations, the three year old horse of the evening Ways, accepting the trophy trainer Gary Newham. So now to the four-year-old and over horse of the year, sponsored by Access Insulation. Uh, Glenn Warmington from Access Insulation is going to come up to the stage right now and be handed an envelope with the winning name. And the finalists in this year's four-year-old and older horse of the year, there are three of them this year, and they are Hootson, Tyzone and Winter Bride. So three finalists. Glenn, if you could open the envelope and announce the winner for the four-year-old and older horse of the year. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Pi Zone. Yeah. 350 metres out. He's off the fence. Freddie Foxtrot goes up on the rail. Divine Dice deeper out for Marvin Estate. Here's the mayor, Manea, joining in. They stretch across the track. Tyzone running on. Manea, Marvin Estate, Tyzone. Freddie Foxtrot, the fence. They're all over the track. They hit it. Tyzone out wide, lunch. 
I'm the Ripper, passage of time. A length and a half in front. Chat reverse can't get out. Has to switch back to the inside of the heels of Goldstone. And here's Tie Zone down the outside. I'm the Ripper, passage of time. Latest Tie Zone on the outside. He's finishing brutally. Tie Zone. Chat reverse the inside, but Tie Zone. Dash struck, grab the lead, and Tie Zone's won. Let's move on to the Apprentice of the Year Awards now, starting with Student of the Year Awards, sponsored by MEGT. Cassandra Hora will come up to the stage to present this award. She's Field Operations Manager for South East Queensland. And the finalists are Hannah Phillips, Hannah English, Jed Hodge. The winner of the Student of the Year, sponsored by MEGT, is Hannah Phillips. And has spent two days' work experience with, uh, at RQ within the handicapping team, gaining experience, valuable experience that she showed immense interest in. At the conclusion of Hannah's apprenticeship in June, Hannah spontaneously went on to thank every trainer she had ridden for throughout her apprenticeship, displaying a great level of respect, pro professionalism and appreciation. Well done, Hannah. Country Apprentice of the Year, and the Country Apprentice of the Year is sponsored by the Queensland Jockey Association, so please welcome back Pam O'Neill. The Country Apprentice of the Year, sponsored by the Queensland Jockeys Association, is Emma Bell. <laughs> Our next award is the Provincial Apprentice of the Year. This one's sponsored by Cutus. And let's welcome up our former fabulous Lord Mayor, Graham Quirk, to present as part of a Racing Queensland board member. And he can auction your house if you need as well. Oh, free ad. Thank you very <laughs> much, Bernie. And ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Provincial Apprentice of the Year, sponsored by Cutus, is Aidan Thompson. 67 overall winners for last season and a great ride on the boss's horse during the week as well. Well done, Aidan. <laughs> Moving on to our Metropolitan Apprentice for the Year, sponsored by Screen Offset Printing. So Mary Collier will come up to present this one. She's the General Manager of Corporate Affairs and Policy. Now that is the title. And she's obviously from Racing Queensland. She's here to present on behalf of Screen Offset Printing. Thanks, Mary. Thanks so much, Bernie, and um, thank you to everyone in attendance. I hope you're having a wonderful night, and it is my pleasure to announce the winner as Bailey Nordoft. So 34 Metropolitan winners with a strike rate of almost 14% last season, 64 overall winners uh, for that season, including the Lizard Ascot Stakes win on Mr Marblers. Congratulations, Bailey. All right, that concludes our awards for the apprentices. I think we're going to uh, now show you the one of the Horse of the Year finalists, Winter Bride. 300 metres to run. Ed Sweet Scandal, a neck in front from Zazi Bar. In good time, drops off now. Then came Resin, Winter Bride, and Sprite starting to wind up on the outside. Inside the 200, Sweet Scandal being tackled by Resin. Winter Bride and Sprite wide out. Resin, Winter Bride, Sprite the outside. Winter Bride goes to Resin. Winter Bride goes home best. Zoo style at the 300 metres markers dashed about three lengths in front from Plague Stone, Jamie Lady, Ron Star, and Cheers or Mines on the outside. But at the furlong marker, Zoo style's about two lengths in front here from Plague Stone and Jamie Lady. Zoo style's in front, Plague Stone's a length and a half away. Jamie Lady's on the outside, Zoo style's in front, and Zoo style's won by a length and a half. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now we get to um, one of the most special parts of the night. In fact, I think it's uh, the most special part of any racing year. We have the Australian Hall of Fame which travels around the country and of course there's so many great Queenslanders in our very own Hall of Fame here in this state and it honours a lifetime of achievement for not only race horses but the people involved as well. So tonight we have five inductees into the Queensland Racing Hall of Fame. 
The first of our Hall of Fame awards is sponsored by Commotion Creative. And I'd like to invite Stuart Lavery, the creative director, to come forward and announce tonight's first inductee. Uh, Commotion Creative is very proud to be sponsors of this category. The inductee of the Racing Queensland 2019 Hall of Fame horse is Boarhead. The Queensland stay of Boarhead was always underrated, not just interstate, but here in Queensland. He won a uh, six furlong two-year-old race and he just kept getting a little bit better with age. As a four-year-old, he won the Queensland Cup and the Ipswich Cup, but there was more to come. As a five-year-old, he had a string of good wins at Eagle Farm. He loved that track, all over staying distances, around about the 11 furlongs, 2,200 metres. He was trained by Ron Dillon, an excellent horseman, but not a high-profile trainer, and uh, later in his career, he was ridden by Fred Clark again, not a high profile figure in racing, but those insiders in Queensland racing industry knew of Fred's talents and Ron gave him the opportunity to ride Boarhead in the Melbourne Spring as a six year old. Boarhead won the Caulfield Cup, it was a decisive victory and the connections looked hopefully to the Melbourne Cup. No Queensland horse has ever won the Melbourne Cup. Perhaps this was the one that got away because Boarhead uh, came to grief about the 800 metres. Fred Clark went to his grave saying Boarhead was travelling well enough to win. Uh, I think that uh, he then came back to Queensland and sadly his eight, nine and ten year old seasons he had 31 starts without a win so a little bit of the gloss came off Boarhead but he's a Caulfield Cup winner, he's a, uh, a Queensland Cup winner, he was a marvellous stayer. He was really well handled throughout his career by Ron Dillon and uh, Fred Clark well, that was his uh, moment in the sun, but he rode a lot of big race winners in Queensland. But I'll always think the, uh, the Caulfield Cup was the pinnacle for Fred and Ron Dillon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Boarhead into the Hall of Fame and accepting tonight on behalf of the family is Eddie Boot. Look, I don't want to bore you, but um, Boarhead was a seriously um, good racehorse, and I want to thank everybody here today, and particularly Racing Queensland. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Congratulations. The uh, next Hall of Fame induction, this time it is a jockey. It's sponsored by Medical Rescue. Stevie Rokosuka, team leader of clinical operations, is going to come forward right now and announce our next inductee into the Queensland Racing Hall of Fame. Thank you. Medical Rescue is very proud to be sponsors of this category. The inductee of the Racing Queensland 2019 Hall of Fame jockey is Noel Best. I met Noel at Durban when I very first moved to Queensland. Um, I had just moved up here with Pat Duff and uh, Noel came and introduced himself to me and um, obviously I knew the name. Um, I was very honoured to meet him. He always gave me tips and advice and um, Every time he's at the races, he calls me out of the jockey's room to, to say hello and you know, tell me that you know, he's been watching me ride and always giving me advice with riding and you know, how to conduct myself pretty much. So he's been a real big influential ever since you know, I've been up here in Queensland. I haven't uh, heard of, of an apprentice winning a, a jockey's title um, and he did that you know, in 51-52 season when he rode 60 winners, which is 12 or 13 more than any other rider that season. To, to win the 10,000 like, at the age of 15, um, I mean, you just don't see that these days. Um, you know, he, and he's done it all. You know, he's won the jockeys premiership, apprentices, and also the training. I mean, like, you just don't see that these days. And like I said, being at the age of 15, the pressure of a group one race, I mean, it's, it's hard to fathom, you know, such a young age of, of, a, of a group one going out there and not only riding in it, but winning it. Um, yeah, it's just incredible. Yeah, well, he also won a straight break on Plato and two Queensland derbies. Um, again, two big, big, very big races, um, you know, that, that, he, that he's had in his career. Um, not only that, but he's also trained big winners. So, um, yeah, it's just absolutely amazing what he's done. 
congratulations, Noel, on being inducted into the Hall of Fame, an acknowledgement well deserved. And I want to thank you for all your help and advice over the years, ever since I moved to Queensland. And um, I look forward to catching up with you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Noel Best into the uh, Hall of Fame. Noel's son, uh, Gary, is going to come up and accept the Hall of Fame honour on his dad's behalf, who can't be with us tonight, but I know all of Noel's families here who can be here. Gary, congratulations. Dad, of course, couldn't be here tonight, but please pass on our congratulations to him when you see him probably tomorrow. I will, thank you. Um, it is quite incredible, isn't it, to, to be a, a champion apprentice, a champion jockey and a champion trainer. And he did that when Fred had a, a year away from training, he had 12 months off. He did it all. And it was probably a, a little bit before your time. You were very, very... Or too young to remember him in his real halcyon days. Yeah, that's true. It's amazing. Um, that young bloke that was just up on the screen, he, he might be a history teacher when he finishes writing. I, I think he, it's amazing what he he knows much more about Dad than I do. Um, uh, and thanks to Michael Hellier for that, being involved in that, because that was quite amazing. I, I got a lot out of that myself. Uh, your dad was amazing. He, 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 I, I don't remember any of that stuff when I was young, but I, I look back on it because Fred was a... I was growing up and Fred was a horse trainer and I was a young bloke um, like in the yard there when I was about 15, 10 to 15 years old and helping out and learning things. And Dad was, dad was training himself at the time then and, like you said, he, uh, Fred got time... At the, I think he was doing 12 months at the time for something that he might have done and... Um, and Dad, Dad got a bit of help to win the trainers' premiership because he he, he took over Dad, uh, my grandfather's horses. So I remember that t that time. Yeah, uh, his favourite horse was Booklink. Surely he talks about him. Yeah, well, Booklink was a family horse. It was um, my grandfather, his wife, my grandmother owned that horse, and he won the Doombin Cup with George Moore on. Um, Joyce is here tonight. She she could probably talk more about the story. She was there at the time. So, um, but Booklink was a, one of their favourite horses. Yeah. We haven't got enough time to get Joycey up. I mean, really. Um, we'll have a private conversation with Joycey later on. Um, please pass on our best to him. Congratulations. If, uh, if ever a Queenslander deserved to be here, it is Noel Best. Thanks very much. He appreciates the award tonight, everyone, and he would love to be here, but he's in hospital recuperating in the time, so if you keep him in your prayers, that would be appreciated. Thanks, Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for our third induction tonight. And this trainer who is about to be inducted is sponsored by the Brisbane Racing Club. Richard Morrison, the Vice Chairman of the Brisbane Racing Club, is going to come forward and announce our next inductee. Richard. Thank you. On behalf of the Brisbane Racing Club, I'm pleased to announce the inductee for Racing Queensland 2019 Hall of Fame trainer, who is John Size. Well, I first came in contact with John Size in the early 70s. Uh, I was training at the Gold Coast at the time, and uh, I used to go out to meetings like Gatton. His parents had the rusty service station at Hatton Vale on the way to uh, out to Gatton, and we'd call in there and. I had a guy working for me at the time called Darrell Stein. Darrell was his brother. Barry, Barry Stein was an excellent jockey, but he was a good friend and he came to work for me and we were looking for a kid or a kid that may be a handy apprentice. And Darrell said to me, there's a young fellow, he's been in Toowoomba, he's with a trainer up there, Dave Carey, but Dave sort of only was a hobby trainer and he was on the loose. He'd come back home to his parents and uh, he said, I think he could be interested in a position. So we went out to the races at Gatton and we called in at Rusty Service Station for a cup of coffee and I was introduced to John Size. While we were having the coffee I noticed John was only a kid. His main interest was could he get the horse a drink of water? And I thought straight away this guy likes animals, he might be it. So anyway we had a chat and his parents and it was decided that he'd come down to me. I always believed that John's, his um, where he really achieved was his uh, involvement with Henry Davis. 
And I think Henry Davis, I watched him over the years and I, I don't think there was a better trainer in the land. Uh, he trained, he pulled off big plunges, he knew how to set a horse, he knew how to condition a horse. John, in the same hand, was a great learner. He was quiet, he never had much to say, but he observed a lot. And I think that possibly I showed him a little bit, but going to Henry Davis had really put the finishing touch on him as a horse trainer. When John went to Sydney, I should say, uh, tr trainers down there said, oh, they don't have swimming races, you know, he won't succeed. It wasn't too long before John was blowing them away and everyone was swimming their horses. Likewise, when he went to Hong Kong, I always remember it was said, oh, John was a very quiet, unassuming type of person. They sort of thought, oh, he probably won't fit in up there because it was all about lunches and dinners and you know, entertaining your owners. John, all he entertained was his horses. He worked hard, he rode work, and he, he stuck to the same format he hit, did here in Australia. It wasn't too long before they weren't going out to dinner. They were trying to train their horses and to keep up with John, and John sustained that throughout. And most of the trainers up there were, they were uh, out and breakfast with the stars, and they were out for their, entertaining their owners. Where was John? He was up at his stable, dressing his horses, getting them ready. John made it happen all the way. And he, you know, he's just been a brilliant horseman. He loves, I think he's just, if you see him in action, he just loves his horses. He loves his racing and he's lived on it. And I think he, he wouldn't uh, be anywhere else, you know. A great, great uh, trainer. And uh, I have to say that uh, we've always kept a good association and a great person, very proud of him. And I think Queensland should be exceptionally proud of the man, he's, what he's done for racing. John, I'd like to say congratulations to you for, for getting this wonderful award. You've deserved it all the way. And I think it's, we're very proud of you. And I just uh, say that it's a wonderful thing and a great achievement. And uh, I'm well worthy of the person that's received it. We welcome uh, John Size. His uh, Queensland Hall of Fame honour now sits alongside his Australian Racing Hall of Fame honour, which he received last year. Liam Tenzi's here to represent John tonight. Thank you very much. Um, John, of course, has been a friend of mine for a long time, and he's asked me to uh, thank Queensland Racing and the sponsors for putting on this um, awards night tonight. John's received many, many accolades in a brilliant training career spanning probably close to 35 years or something. But uh, he asked me to pass on that this is one honour that he really appreciates because it's from, from his home state, Queensland. He's a local boy, he was brought up in Dolby. He was edu educated somewhat reluctantly at Downlands College. <laughs> and he trained, started his training career at Deegan. So that's uh, a snapshot of the the history of, or the start of John Size in the racing industry. His achievements, of course, are legend. They've uh, been documented. He's won the Hong Kong Premiership a record 11 times. He drew once with Casper uh, Founts, and uh, he's won races in many parts of the world. He's very proud of, of this award, and uh, I'll be travelling to Hong Kong in the near future and I'll make sure that it's still a to him. Thank you very much. Thank you, Liam. And congratulations to John Size. Our next uh, Hall of Fame honour is sponsored by Tattersall's Racing Club. Dominion Edward Profke is going to come forward and announce our inductee, uh, this time in the Associates category. Uh, thank you very much. It's a, uh, an honour and a privilege to be here tonight uh, as part of Tattlesell's Club, 154 years old this year as part of Australia's fabric, Queensland racing history and uh, the history of Australia. A particular thank you tonight to uh, Racing Queensland's, Queensland's Bruce, uh, Brendan Parnell and uh, Mary Collier for uh, their efforts in working with Tattlesell's Club and your team and to everyone here tonight, I hope you've had a wonderful night. Uh, Tattersall's Racing Club, the history goes back past the 154 years and its establishment in the English racing stables uh, many years ago to bring us to where we are today. So it's a very proud night for all of us tonight at Tattersall's. Uh, our sponsors in this category, they include the Racing Hall Fame Associate, 
and that announcement in that category tonight is Sir Albert Sazowski. Sir Albert Sazowski was the first chairman of the TAB here in Queensland, a position he held for 20 years. And in doing so, he laid the foundations for racing here in Queensland to grow and thrive. A keen sportsman, he was Queensland Amateur Billiards Champion five times and Snooker Champion eight times. He was a passionate racing man and owner. His best runner was Friars Follick, who won the 1951 Sires Produce and Queensland Guineas. He was Honorary Treasurer of the Tattersalls Club from 1936 to 1952 and was elected President for three years from 1953. However, his lasting legacy was his philanthropy. In 1971, he established the Sir Albert Zakzewski Foundation that for over a decade distributed more than $1 million to charities. In 1986, he founded the establishment of the Sir Albert Zakzewski Virus Research Centre. I'm sure I can speak on behalf of all Queenslanders in congratulating the family of Sir Albert Zakzewski on his induction into the Queensland Racing Hall of Fame. And ladies and gentlemen, uh Accepting tonight, representing Sir Albert as his nephew, His Honour Judge Greg Cobbenhole, who will accept the award. He would have been very proud of this award. And on his behalf, I thank Racing Queensland for inducting Sir Albert Saksuski into Racing Queensland's Hall of Fame. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to our final Hall of Fame inductee, and once again it's in the, to the Associates category. It's sponsored by the Pullman at Brisbane Airport. Alex Penklis, the Chief Operating Officer for Brisbane Airport Hotel Group, is going to come up on stage. And also Brendan Parnell, the CEO of Racing Queensland. Are we doing this as a duo act or? No, you can do it together. You sure? No, you do. I just want to uh, confirm, whilst Pullman Brisbane Airport is, is very honoured to be associated with the event this evening, there is no truth in the rumour <clears throat> that the after party is in Glen Munsey Suite at the Pullman Brisbane Airport tonight. I just want to clarify that. Um, one double eight six. Thanks, Munsey. Um, it gives me great honour. I'm delighted tonight on behalf of Bris Pullman Brisbane Airport Hotel to announce the inductee of the Racing Queensland Hall of Fame Associate, Associate sorry, for 2019 is Pat O'Shea. Pat was one of the most versatile commentators there uh, that there's ever been. Most people recall him as the uh, the voice of Clifford Park to Woomba at the Thoroughbreds, but he was much, much more than that. He called the Greyhounds on the Darling Downs for 15 years, the Harness for around about 20 years, Breakfast Radio, uh, 4WK, Pat and his sidekick were, uh, were high rating and always entertaining. Wind Television News, he read that most nights and then uh, with a bit of juggling between his calling duties, he'd sometimes have to, have to record that, but, but they got away with that. One thing a, a lot of people may not know, Pat called boxing from the famous Festival Hall in Brisbane back to the radio station in Toowoomba. They thought there was a market for that and uh, he stepped up. I think with so many good young callers around at the moment, rising stars, if they were to drag out some of the Pat O'Shea tapes and just uh, listen to them and inject a bit of O'Shea into their calls, that would be wonderful. Pat was a fabulous caller and his ability to, to handle difficult names was, was almost without peer. He always reckoned the only name that got him was a horse called Bu Kang Lai Weiwei, which as Pat said, if you said it slowly it was easy, Bu Kang Lai Weiwei, but when you said it quickly it take, took your tongue in all sorts of kooky directions. So in a race at Toowoomba I think Pat called it Lai Kang Lai Boo Boo in about four or five different names until it crossed the line. Then he called the Bukang Lai Weiwei. And the great, it just goes to prove the great callers, they always get there in the end. So Pat, from myself and all your race calling colleagues, congratulations on this induction into the uh, Racing Queensland Hall of Fame. Very well deserved. Accepting on Pat's behalf tonight is his son James. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much to uh, Chairman of Racing Queensland, Mr. Stephen Wilson, to the CEO, uh, Mr. Brendan Parnell. Uh, the Honourable Minister Sterling Hinchcliffe, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this honour. It's for my family, 
on behalf of my mum, Cecile, my sisters, Kate and Karen, uh, this is something really, really special to myself and, and to my family. Uh, Dad loved racing. It's something that we grew up around. I think at his funeral uh, four years ago now, my sister actually made the statement, which is actually correct. She said when most kids grew up at home, you played shots or something like that, but we actually played TABs. So um, that probably had something to do with the amount of tickets that were lying around home as well. So, but, um, but it's something that's, that's been a part of our family and something that Dad loved. And he, he absolutely loved the racing industry and he absolutely loved the industry around the Darling Downs. And, and we know how strong racing is in the, in the Darling Downs and to be here tonight and to see already the amount of uh, either Darling Downs winners or ex-Darling Downs winners and right from John Sires right through to every other name that we've seen here that is some sort of association with, with, our, um, with our region. So, uh, and look, ladies and gentlemen, I guess you, you don't quite understand, I guess, the, the impact that, that someone has and, until, sadly, and, until they're gone. And, and that's something that's been more and more evident to me when it comes to my father over the last four years, whether it's been from people who've stopped me on the street at home, it's a Woomba, obviously going to different sporting events. And, and to be honest, it, um, and a really touching moment, it, it continued right up until the start of this award ceremony with uh, the man standing behind me, uh, Mr. Brendan Parnell, who spoke of, of Dad and said that he was one of his early mentors. So to understand the profound impact that he had on a lot of people is something that, that is not lost on, on me. Uh, it's something that I'm unbelievably proud of and I'm so proud to stand here today, as I said, on behalf of my family and, uh, and accept this award and, and thank you very, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a, uh, a collective round of applause for our Hall of Fame inductees tonight. Boarhead, Noel Best, John Size, Sir Albert Zagzewski and the legend Pat O'Shea. So we continue on, Bernie, come on, come on up, back up because we're uh, going to continue on with our uh, next awards and we're drawing closer. In fact, we're only four, four away from the Horse of the Year Award. Our next award is the Ken Russell Queensland Apprentice of the Year. It's sponsored by Sky Racing and I'd like to welcome to the stage our boss, Darren Pearce, uh, to speak on behalf of uh, the big partner of tonight's uh, award ceremony, uh, Sky, and also Tabcorp. He's uh, the general manager of media and international for Tabcorp. Ladies and gentlemen, Darren Pearce. Thank you, Greg, and uh, good evening, everybody. The Honourable Sterling Hinchcliffe, the Honourable Don Brown, Racing Queensland Chairman Steve Wilson, Racing Queensland CEO Brendan Parnell, ladies and gentlemen, and the great contributors to Queensland Racing. I'm delighted to be here tonight representing all the team at TAB and Sky Racing as we celebrate an incredible season here in the Sunshine State. We pride ourselves on bringing Queensland Racing to horse lovers and punters in Australia and right around the world. TAB Corp has been a strong partner of Queensland Racing for decades and our businesses are the biggest financial backer of Australian racing. Last year, we returned over $1 billion to the three codes of Australian racing. We're proud that our business helps support an industry that delivers thousands of Queensland jobs and sets hearts racing from Cairns to Capalaba. It's been a big year for wagering and racing in Queensland. We completed our brand integration earlier this year with a splash of tab green now being seen right across this great state at racetracks and venues, and it looks absolutely fantastic. The wagering technology merge will take place early in the financial year coming and will unlock benefits for punters and the racing industry alike. We're very excited for what's to come and it can only lead to growth for racing in this great state. Tab and Sky are absolutely committed to supporting industry participants on an ongoing basis and we have established fantastic race club sponsorships and partnerships right across the state this year. We are the proud of the role we play in racing and that our business helps to further strengthen Queensland racing. Put simply, the team and I are absolutely passionate about partnerships. Without the dedication of racing's participants, we wouldn't have a thriving industry. It is fantastic to come together tonight to recognise and celebrate the achievements of Queensland's great horse people and the thoroughbreds that we love. I'd like to congratulate Racing Queensland on a fantastic season 
I'm looking forward to even bigger and better things ahead as momentum and energy builds. Congratulations to all our finalists and winners tonight and have a great evening, everybody. Thank you. All right, thank you, Darren. And Queenslanders throughout the room, I think that, um, I think that you can be really, really proud of everybody here tonight, but particularly those Hall of Famers. They were extraordinary men and most of them extraordinary horsemen. And that is something that Queensland is just brilliant at producing. And I actually think you saw from a future Hall of Famer there. So I say to the voters uh, of the Hall of Fame that Pat Duff is probably very, very close to getting there. And I'm sure you'd all agree because, yeah. Not only is he a great man, as all of these guys are, but he is a gentleman of the turf. And the next guy, uh, the next award rather, which is the Ken Russell a Queensland Apprentice of the Year Award. Uh, we all remember Ken as just a marvellous man who we sadly lost well before his time, but just an absolute gentleman of the turf. So this race, uh, this award rather, is very honourable to be winning. So. Um, Darren will be presenting this award, but the finalists for this award are Jag Guthman Chester, Jackson Murphy, Michael Murphy, and Bailey Nodev. Thanks, Darren. On behalf of all the team at Tab and Sky, the winner of the Ken Russell Queensland Apprentice of the Year, sponsored by us, is Bailey Nodev. <laughs> Stuck in is doing just that. It's a length and a half in front. Ponytails tries. Late as Magstock down the outside, but it's all get stuck in. And get stuck in is going to win the last by three length. Sony Legend still just in front, but Mr. Marvel is on the outside lifting. Sony Legend, Mr. Marvel is Mr. Marvel is stretches and wins. The favourite dashed up and went to the lead here. Barefoot breaking clear for Rosendale Red. Windermere late Sharanda, but it's all barefoot. And barefoot stroke clear, won it by three lengths. Big honour, no doubt, to win uh, uh, an award like this named after Ken Russell. Yeah, no, great honour, thank you. Well done. Yeah. Great job, Bailey. All right, the next award for tonight will be the Queensland Jockey of the Year, and this is sponsored by Garrett's Horse and Hound. So welcome Darren Garrett uh, from Garrett's Horse and Hound to the stage. Everybody knows Garrett's Horse and Hound. <laughs> Thank you. Our finalists for this year are Michael Carl, Jeff Lloyd, Matthew McGilvray, and Justin Stanley. Thanks, Darren. Okay, on behalf of Garrard's, the winner is Michael Carl. Fun fact with 100 metres left to go, still the leader from on the outside home, made Angel of Heaven, trusty lad. Fun fact is still in front near the line, and fun fact is pitched the Grand Prix, one of... Here's the Candyman bursting through. Lover Lovers on the outside. Harrah Paul late. The Candyman the inside. I grain late as Harrah Paul. But the Candyman shot through. Grabbed the lead. Harrah Paul late. But the Candyman he went again. The Candyman by neck to Harrah Paul. Ready to profit. Has race clear up to make the half in front from Panino. Late skate to Paris. Ready to profit in front from Skate to Paris. Organza in front. Ready to profit. Ready to profit. Australians coming through. White Moss on the outside from dollar for dollar. And Juvius down the outside. Erethea the Bostonian. Juvius down the outside. The Bostonians grab the lead away from Erethea. Latest Princess Potion trekking. But the Bostonians in front near the line. And the Bostonians run again. What a 12 months Mick Cullis had. Congratulations, Mick, on an awesome year. Yeah, 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 great. Two group ones, two group threes, and two listed winners. Uh, 
Firstly, how do we describe longevity as a jockey? Like, I mean, obviously it's pretty hard to keep year after year old. What do you say? <laughs> it's almost just a bit cheeky. Uh, like, it, it's not easy to keep backing up, is it? No, it's a pretty demanding profession, Bernie, that, that we're in, but it probably comes down to how much you desire it to, and otherwise um, it's the only thing I've known, race riding. I started when I was 15, and uh, I've been fortunate throughout my career. I've worked very hard, but I've been very lucky. And, you know, you keep getting opportunities. You go through periods where that aren't so good and you have other seasons that are, everything falls into place, which the last one did. And I get terrific support at home from my wife, Maxine, her support and strength. I've got a fantastic manager in Glen Courtney, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, they're behind the scenes, but they, they help me so much. And I've had terrific support from Queensland trainers and owners over the years. Some of my associations go back over 20 years, mm -hmm. the likes of Barry Baldwin, Kelly Schweider, etc. But um, I've been very fortunate that way. And I've been, another way I've been fortunate, I've been pretty um, injury free through my career, which is not always mm. easy in this profession. But so I've been able to stay fit and keen. Mm. You're one of three children, all great riders. Well, my younger brother, Matthew, yeah, he was, um, he's an underrated rider. He was mm. a leading apprentice in Sydney when he was with Jack Denham. But once he lost his claim, he didn't want to stay in Sydney, he wanted to go back to the bush. And he's remained there ever since. He had all sorts of offers to go back to Sydney, but he, he likes the country life. And, mm. and my younger sister, Catherine, she's a, she's a trainer. She, she, um, mm. well, she's a, she's a part-time trainer. But mm. No, we've, we're a racing family. My father's a jockey and trainer. He was a great teacher. He taught me everything I knew about race riding and we've been involved in racing all our lives. You've ridden, obviously, internationally, but mm. you're happy to make the Gold Coast your home and, and obviously ride in Brisbane on a weekly basis. Is that likely to continue? Yeah, I think so, Bernie. Yeah, we have, um, Maxine and I have two, two children now and they're pretty well settled and established mm. in their schools at the Gold Coast and we enjoy living there. It's a nice place to live. Mm. Beautiful. Um, You've often been described as the quiet achiever. How would you describe your personality? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm probably, probably a little bit reserved, I suppose, but that's the way I was brought up. I had a pretty good grounding in the game and you try not to get, I was always taught not to get ahead of myself and and um, be grateful for your, for your opportunities and your successes and I take each week as it comes and and I go from there. Mm. So when this winter carnival arrived and Tony Pike, you got the call from Tony Pike, mm. you must have given a little woohoo. Yeah, I was pleased to be on him. Well, I, I rode him, <laughs> yes, you certainly arrived. We, we weren't sure if he was going to measure up to, to group one racing, but he mm. showed good potential here last winter. I won, three races on him culminating in the Sunshine Coast Guineas, which has been a good race in recent times to um, future horses. And uh, when I went and rode him in New Zealand in a group one, he ran good and they said we're coming to Brisbane, asked him if I could ride him and, and he, um, he improved again. He's only a lovely race horse and he, he came out and won the Boom in 10,000 and then the Kingston Smith Cup and no, he's a, he, he's a real, real top liner. You mentioned Barry Baldwin earlier. The candy man has been a phenomenon for all concerned with him. What is he like to ride? Oh, he's a lovely horse. He's got a terrific will to win. Yeah. Very intelligent horse. He went through a bit of a period where he was reluctant to leave the barriers and he's overcame that now. Barry and his staff put a lot of work into him and soon will fix that. I, I think he's a very good horse. He's probably a mile and a quarter type horse. He's very effective on wet tracks, but yeah, he's, um, his best days are ahead of him as well. Yeah, indeed, and everybody's sort of probably well aware of the massive injuries he suffered. Mm. Do you think that makes him more of a people horse? I think so, yeah. He's got a big following, also yeah. his colour, and he's, he's got a real character about him, the candy man. Yeah. Congratulations on a great year and well done on the award. Thanks so much, Lena. Thank you, Bernie. Two to go. And our next award is for the Queensland Trainer of the Year, sponsored by Magic Millions. Clint Donovan is going to come forward from Magic Millions Bloodstock. Been a good night on the Magic Millions table, obviously. The, uh, before I get uh, Clint, who's one of the top auctioneers, to announce in his best auctioneer voice the winner. The finalists for Queensland Trainer of the Year, there are four of them. Toby Edmonds, Tony Gollan, David Van Dyke, and Chris Waller. Over to you, Clint. Thanks, Greg. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, very proud for uh, Magic Millions to announce the winner of the Queensland Trainer of the Year for 2019 is, on table 29, Tony Gollan.
across the 300 metres, Mark Green kicking away, he's exploding clear now, Zoo Style. Four, five lengths in front, Panino played it down back, Barbie down the outside, Zoo Style four lengths in front, out back, Barbie runs to second, but Zoo Style's in front, and Zoo Style a brewing gallop for one by three quarters. Music Magnate, the leader from Melbourne Estate at Coldstone. Music Magnate's in front, latest Coldstone. Coldstone, Music Magnate, Music Magnate, Coldstone. Coldstone, too strong, late Coldstone has won an empty Music Magnate. Vega one shot through, went for the lead from Majani Hustler. The inside race course road will target down the outside, but still three to four lengths off Vega one. And Vega one's well clear from Altarja, and it's all Vega one. Off the leader, a length and a half in front from Perudo. Ritten with his California Zimbal and Gemma Scotland late down the outside. Need off Perudo, Gemma Scotland. Need off Perudo, Gemma Scotland. Photo, but I think it'll be Perudo. Magnified Silvera. Prioritise and head to Pascal, but Silvera sprints hard and fast, grabs the lead, and Silvera. Silvera defeats a Raja flashing for a second. Congratulations, Tony. It's been a wonderful season. 84 Metro winners, 136 on the Queensland Premiership, uh, nine black type wins, eight listed in uh, one group three. But I'm sure still you wanted more. <laughs> yeah, you always want more, don't you? Um, didn't, get another group, didn't get a group one this year, which was slightly frustrating, uh, as all the trainers would appreciate. But look, overall, it's been a fantastic season. I have great support from uh, what I have clients and certainly my staff, they do, they do all the, really the work and I'm just the lucky guy that gets to get up here and get the trophy. Was there any, uh, any moment during the year that stood out? Was there a real highlight for you this year? Oh, look, I'm not sure. There's always a lot of highlights throughout the year. Uh, a few times we got a couple of uh, four peats on a, on a Saturday with mm -hmm. a few black type races as well. They were always very special, but any time you get a stakes winner, but look, we just cherish every winner we can get. We're trying to do a good job week to week. and. In doing that, we can get up here and get a woods like this. And uh, what about Zoo Style? He's the horse that we want to see produce something big, and we know he's got it in him. So what's next for Zoo Style? <laughs> the pressure's off after Sydney anyway. Um, it's a bit disappointing down there, but he's, um, he runs at Caulfield on Sunday in the Testarossa, so back to listed grade. And, and um, I think you'll see him back to his best at uh, six furlong, 1,200 metres. So looking forward to this weekend. All right, and then you've got a, a big spring, hopefully, uh, headed by that horse. And I'm sure you're looking forward to the revamp summer carnival up here too, something you can really concentrate on because it looks fantastic the way they've revamped it. Yeah, it does. We've had a lot of success over the summer carnival in previous years, and um, I, I quite like changes to this year's carnival. I think it gives the four-year-olds a chance, the stayers a chance as well. So it's an exciting carnival for us. I think racing Queensland's going from strength to strength. There's great management at the helm now, and and we're looking forward to having a, a very strong summer carnival team. They're all back in the stables now and we're all um, in good shape. So looking forward to the summer. All right. Congratulations. Well done. Thanks, mate. Good luck Sunday. Tony Gollan. OK. One to go, Bernie. One to go. It's the big one. 2019 Tab Queensland Horse of the Year. Now, let's uh, invite some special guests to the uh, stage. Uh, Racing Queensland uh, Chairman Steve Wilson, if you'd like to come forward, Steve, and join us on stage. Stilling Hinchliffe, the Minister for Racing, also a representative from TAB, our sponsors, Sean Scott, who's the Head of Wagering of Queensland at TAB Corp. Welcome those three gentlemen to the stage for one final award. Sean Scott's going to announce the winner after we once again outline our, our four finalists for this year. And those four finalists for Queensland Horse of the Year are Tie Zone, Winning Ways, Winter Bride, and Zoo Style. Sean Scott. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And on behalf of TAB, it gives me great pleasure to announce tonight the winner of the 2019 TAB Queensland Horse of the Year is 
winning ways. Draws alongside, goes home too well, and winning ways beat Joymaker. Winning ways looms up, went straight past Angela's Beauty. Winning Wales sailed alongside Gunbolt at the 200 metres peg. Winning ways in front. Michael Hadia rides hard to make sure, and the favourite begins to stride away. Smart man. Billy still. Winning ways. Wins by two and a half. The leader is still Sevinia at the 425 from Welsh Legend. Produced on the outside now, Prince Anne's Denny. Likewise, winning ways very wide. Next over on the inside there is just in behind those horses. Battling away at the 150 is Rosendale Red. But the leader on the outside is winning ways. Winning ways has hit the lead. Welsh Legend trying to go with winning ways. Latest Dawson Diva down the outside. And also Lady Cafe. Winning ways, Dawson Diva. Lady Cafe. Winning ways in front. Winning ways. Winning Wise is one thing, Oaks. Congratulations. Come in here, Gash. What are you going to do with that trophy? Get a savvy to take it home. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest trophy I've ever seen. We just one of them, Alec. Come on, Starcraft win any trophies like that? Not that big. No. Nah. Well, of course, you had Starcraft, and Paul Macon owned that. And sadly, before Winning Ways won the Oaks, we lost Paul. Yes. Uh, which was a sad occasion for your stable, sad occasion for you personally, a great friend. Unbelievable. He was good to you. Definitely, yeah. Put me on the map, gave me two group one winners. Can't ask for much more than that. He knew somehow, before he passed, that this horse would give you a group one. Who told who? Did you tell him or did he tell you? Actually, I told him about six months ago, before the race, but the first one to tell me was Michael Carl. He said, you've got a Oaks filly here. And I listened to him and I worked on it from there. And Paul allowed you to set this mare for the Oaks. That was her goal all along and she achieved it. Yes, uh, at first he laughed at me and when I won the uh, race at the Gold Coast I took the trophy down to him on the Sunday, he had a mild stroke, he was flat out talking and the words got out was, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think you're right. You were right. Oh, I was right. Starcraft gave you so many wonderful moments in the sport but for this filly to come along now, is it, uh, you feel like you're a bit rejuvenated? Oh, definitely. I'd got uh, soured off with the racing. I'd been through the Starcraft days on that high. Come down off him, he went off to England. I uh, got going again with just some ordinary horses. Then I got an offer to go to New Zealand to, to train, so I packed up, I went to New Zealand for five years, came back, give it right away, drove a horse float for four years, and then Paul got in touch with me to uh, want to do it all again. So, hand the peas over pretty quick. That's great. Now tell us about this wonderful filly. Culminating in an Oaks win, you had confidence all the way along, didn't you? Definitely. Uh, she's the greatest filly. She's just so placid, so relaxed. Anything you ask her to do, she'll do for you. She's got a heart, the biggest heart. She just puts in 100% in every race. And you can't ask for more than that. You've just got to place them right. Now, it's obviously an easy target uh, to head to Melbourne and try and win a, a big cup. Um, Oaks, Phillies, uh, especially from Queensland, they've got a record. Yes, they have got a record, but I think she's uh, not caught up to it at this stage, so we boarded those plans. We'll stay home, we'll go back to the drawing board, try to get a wild card into one of the Magic Millions races and wait for Queensland Winter Cardinal again. OK, so and she's going to be a real that. Queenslander this year. You're staying put? I'm staying put. Summer Carnival, Winter Carnival? Dooming Cup. It's not that you don't like travelling. I mean, you'd... I love travelling, I love getting away. Yeah, but this is but... best for this filly. She's not ready for it yet.
All right. Well, congratulations uh, to you for all the work you've done and that marvellous filly. We look forward to seeing her when she tries to get that wild card into the minions. That's lovely. Well done, Gary. Thank you very much. And I'd just like to say, I'd like to thank Bernie. Bernie's been one of my best supporters with winning ways. Thank you, Bernie. All right. Well, I'd like to thank Bernie too for all the work she's done tonight. Congratulations, uh, Gary Newham, and all of our award winners here this evening, Bernie. Yeah, a fantastic night, and I think everyone can be very, very proud. And I think Gary made a really vital point. You can get sour because racing is a passionate game, and let's face it, everybody pours their heart into it. But we all know that perseverance is, is the key, and generally everyone gets their time to shine as they have tonight. So congratulations to everyone. I just want to say, Brendan Parnell, You've been our saving grace. You're doing an awesome job. Your talent in that job has been marvellous. Sterling Hinchliffe, who really didn't know much about racing before he became racing minister. Sterling, you're doing a great job. We knew you'd turn for racing. From basketball. From basketball, that is. So thank, thank you, and we look forward to doing it all again next year. We will. It's in for a great season. A great season coming up. A great uh, 2019, 2020. Is the band here? <laughs> Or have they cancelled the band? Anyway, that's it for the awards, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for coming tonight. And thank you, Bernie. Enjoy the rest of the night, everyone. And good luck if you've got a two-year-old trialling tomorrow.